certainly is a good afternoon, guys, from last time we were here. But um, really, I thought we had a good all-around effort. I thought um, I know Mike Perry has uh, has done a a job there. And when you take over as an interim coach, it's always tough. I've been knowing Mike since the '80s when he played at University of Richmond. He's, he's done a good job for them. I know they've, but we. We did the right things today. We played the right way. I thought we had a good balance in our scoring. The key was our defensive effort uh, from the beginning. Uh, I thought we, we sort of uh, set a good tone there by the, the number of deflections we had in the first half. And we set, you know, we got control of the tempo for the most part. Uh, so happy to see our, you know, Jamario and Alex, you know, leave on a win here. At the form, so we're really, really pleased with with the way the guys play. You know, obviously rebounding and assists were key. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's again, he's been like a vocal leader. Sometimes too much of a vocal leader, like he was today, and get you in trouble. But I thought, you know, he's been that kind of a tough guy. You know, even though he doesn't appear. You know, physically to be a very intimidating guy, but I think he can he can you know he can actually control the game with his defensive ability, and um, so he's he's a guy that's gotten the most I think out of his um, physique and physical, uh, you know, because he's got athleticism. Or he's a guy that he doesn't shoot that great, but he really does all the other things well. Passes the ball well, um, and defends. It rebounds, uh, so and, and you know he's he's a guy that's always on the floor. And I'm glad to see him go out the right way. It was, it really has been a, it's been it's been, you know we haven't had our sometimes we've had our ups and downs, but he's been a joy to coach. You know because he because he works so hard, I mean, in practice and in games. Coach uh, Kareem had a great game today. Talk about his leadership and what he meant for this game today. Kareem Bruton, yeah, he, he really stepped up, you know, because he struggled the other day, one for ten. Um, and I thought today he just, you know, we had a you know, a skull session or a film session. I think he saw the things that he needed to do. But this is what he does. He's a scorer. He has a scoring mentality when you try to get him to be a point guard. And I thought South Florida did some things to us, and we're going to have to be really conscious of that playing them uh, in the tournament. That they, you know, the kid Jiggett and their guards are very, very good. And I thought that they did some things that we're going to have to make some adjustments with, uh, adjustments too. But I thought Kareem Bruton really, you know, ran the team the right way, controlled the tempo for the most part, uh, made some good decisions. But the most importantly was his, his defense. I thought he really defended well because uh, Tyson and Sean Williams and Isaac Fleming are pretty. Well, they're pretty talented kids, and they hurt us up there. You know, those those guys really had good games. You know, Fleming had a triple double when we played up there, so we uh, it was good to see them respond to see Kareem lead that defensive uh, effort. Tubby, would, down here, would you uh, were you was was it a relief to see the team kind of get back to the way? They have been playing prior to Thursday night. Just the way you know the dominating in the paint, moving the ball more. How how important was it to to just return to that type of play right away after a blip like the other night? I mean, you don't you don't. I mean, it was, I, I'll be really honest with you. I've been coaching a long time. I've never seen what happened happen. Never experienced that in my 45 years of coaching. But you know, it is what it was. I don't know why, but. We we stunk it up so bad, uh, but again, you know adversity, you know you know will do that to you. You got to come together, and I thought our guys really, um, I think they were embarrassed. You know I was um, you know, because I did a poor job, obviously, of getting them ready. You know, must have because we <laughs> we didn't play, well, but but to see them respond like this. With the defensive effort, now, now we had to do some things to get their defensive attention, which is going back to the fundamentals. I thought that was because you have game slippage. Even though we were winning, 
you know, we, there are things we were not doing and that I thought South Florida exposed. And, and, you know, and then the other thing is respecting your opponents. That's probably the most, the biggest, um, that was the thing that hurt me the most was that the lack of respect that they showed. Do you like the fact that you get to face USF on Thursday? You get well, it doesn't matter who, but yeah, I'll be good. You know, we, we got to play a lot better than we did last time. But I'm sure they feel like, hey, they beat us here. They feel like they can beat us pretty. You know, so, so we better come with our best effort between not just on, but tomorrow in practice. Mitch, what do you tell the team going into uh, the AAC tournament? What do you tell the team to go after a conference uh, championship? You've been here many of years. and this What's is, that uh, now? You've I'm been sorry. here many of years to do the, the coaching thing. What yeah. do you tell your team going into March? Well, really, I just, you know, you know, March Madness is, is a fun time. It's sort of the um, – you've got to embrace it. And so we really haven't had that here in a while. We didn't do it last year and didn't do it year. So it's, it's, um, it's a new experience for, but for, for some of the guys. But for most of them, they, they went to postseason play. Like Kareem Bruton took his all team all the way to the national championship game. Keevan Davenport took his team. They won the conference with their team to a – to the to the junior college, so we're going to try to um, help help them, let them lead by example, and I think that's what you see in a Kareem Bruton and a Kareem uh, Kevin Davenport. You know, those guys have been there before. Um, and so I, I usually ask them, how many of you guys have won championships? How many of you guys have played in postseason play? You know, not just the NCAA, but where you were. We've had a few, but but not as many as you. It's like, see, but we've been there for. It's just a matter of, I think it's all about fundamentals because everybody has every film on you. They have every, all your tendencies, all your weaknesses and your strengths. So now it's a matter of, uh, of executing the fundamentals. So we usually this time of the year go back to just the basic fundamentals of passing, catching, shooting, you know, doing the little things you have to do to be, to be better. Uh, so we, I just told them that we needed to just, you know, you know enjoy this. This win uh, is a good win for us. Go out with winning five of the last six games. We're playing, even though we had that bad game, we still have a lot to play for. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of the attitude we've, we've taken. It's a new season, too. And that's kind of the thing we look at. Coach, uh, one of the biggest drawbacks of this team has been, been being consistent over a long period of time. Now and, and, you're being consistent over a long period of time. Consistent. 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 Yeah. What are you going to do to make sure that they're consistent for the potentially next four games and also mentally prepared for each game going into it? Well, I, I thought we just, you know, I don't, we're not a team that's going to overwhelm anybody. You know, by that I mean we've, we've got, you know, we've got to play the right way. Guys have got to share the basketball. They've got to screen. We just don't have that, you know, we're talented. Number one recruiting class in the league. I think we, I think we stuck to it and stuck with the process and and pulled some things out, but as I said before, they got to get better between now and when we play Wednesday, Thursday, we're out on Thursday. So, and I think that's what we're we're gonna want to build on. That's the consistency of of defending number one because everybody and anyone can do that, and that's what we didn't do the other night. That's why we got beat, but that's what has helped us be more consistent all year long. You know, we're in pretty much every game this year except a couple. And um and, and we and you just can't make mistakes. I think that's something we did better in the second half today and, and tonight, taking care of the basketball and, and getting seventeen assists. So, it, so those are things that you have to do this time of the year if you're gonna if you're gonna win and advance. And so that's what we'll we'll concentrate on the next few days. Season, I think they predicted uh, you'd finish ninth. You guys finished fifth. Or lower. Or lower. You guys finish fifth in the conference. When yeah. you look back at what you did in conference play, strictly conference play, did you shut up a few people? Did no. you? Are you satisfied? No, I'm never satisfied. I thought we should have been third or fourth. I'll be honest with you. I think we have that much talent. Now, I, you know, as a coach, first person I look at is myself. What could I have done differently? What could I have done better? How could I have like, motivated guys, inspire guys to do better and uh, or, or develop that consistency that we need to have, especially in late game situations? I thought that's where we really had. It was pretty evident when we lost to East Carolina in overtime. 
we had, we just, there's no way we should have lost that game. No, we should have lost the game the other day. We had, you know, I'm just, you know, I expected us to have 15 wins in this league, to be honest with you. And, and, and I'm really, I'm, I'm disappointed we didn't, but I'm happy that our guys are learning and are improving. And, uh, and I knew that we, it didn't help, you know, with, we had our ups and downs and, you know, things that are distracting on the court, off the court. So, so I thought um, our guys through it all, they were committed. Uh, they were there. They pledged their allegiance to us getting the job done, and that's what I appreciated. They pledged their allegiance to this university and to each other, and um, and recovered from. And, and, and as I said before, it came out with five out of six wins. Coach, you've been around this game for a long time. <laughs> what would you rate Mike Parks's windmill dunk at the end of the game today? Pardon me. What would you rate Mike Parks's windmill dunk at the end of the game today? What would you rate that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one because Mike. You know, I was telling him to hold up because we had the game won. But it was good to see Mike, you know, because he played well. Again, he had a really – he's been a guy that has really struggled. He's probably been inconsistent because his – obviously I can tell when his knees are feeling better. I mean, when he gets his treatment, the proper treatment, and, and does the things he needs to do, he's a little more mobile and agile. And I thought today uh, – I don't rate dunks. I'm not a big dunk fan, but, you know, he's a – but I'd probably give him an eight or a nine on that. Maybe a 10 for him. <laughs> you mentioned off the court distractions. What were those and how did you deal with them? And they are, are they a symptom of Memphis or is it just a symptom of more college basketball? I don't day? have time to discuss it right now. Maybe later on in some interview we can discuss it. But right now we're excited about what we're doing, where we are. We're not distracted now. That was in the past. So we're moving forward. And I think that's going to be the key to us playing better uh, against South Florida. The season's not over, but uh, one of the biggest problems has been um, basically a mass exodus after every year. How confident after I know you're losing a couple of seniors, you've got two new recruits. How confident that uh, are you that everybody's coming back? Well, I, we, we'll talk to them. Kids have a lot of options nowadays with the new NCAA regulations and Guys can transfer when they want. I've been in this business a long time. Never seen like we had over 800 Division One players transfer last year. Over 800. <laughs> Come on, teach them how to quit. That's what we're doing. Things not going well, let's quit. I remember calling my dad when I was a freshman, High Point College. Dad, I'm people not treat you know, I'm this and that, I'm unhappy here, I, you know, I don't, you know, I was one but two blacks in the whole school. And Dad, he said, son, somebody do something to you? No. They still, you're still getting your scholarship, aren't you? They still feeding you. They still housing you. still getting education? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, you can't come home. Your bed's been taken. This is 1968, 69. But you can join the Army. Best thing he ever said to me. So that's who I am. And so when I see this, and you ask him about Max, exit, exit. Yeah, it is what it is. Somebody need to tell him that, hey, you made a, you made a commitment. Stick to it. But it doesn't happen that way. They got a lot of people in the ear. That's the way life is. Those are the distractions, the noise. If you can just put that in a box and keep the noise away like I do, it's the only way you can survive and advance in anything. Because you're going to have your naysayers, you're going to have your, you know, doubters. I mean, that's always. You know, coach don't like me. This doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. That's just that's the way it is. But, you know, it's, it's and most people, hopefully they're better off when they do make a move. We wish them the best. If any of them do leave, we're going to be the first one to – Thank them for their service and, and, and wish them the best. Coach, well, somebody that showed a lot of commitment to your program, Alex Moffett, um, over this year, how happy were you that you had an opportunity to get him in at the end of the game there? With well, that I was situation? very happy. And we rewarded him with a scholarship this year. So he was um, – and, and I think he did it. He's, he's been a good leader for us all year long. I mean, not one problem with Alex. He's, he's 
in practice. He's over there cheering, clapping for the guys. They love him. He's been, you know, I mean, he helps them in any way possible, whether it's academically, whether it's any ride. He's, he's, he's going to be an excellent coach someday. I love to have him on my staff. That's what I think of that young man. Anyway, thank you.